and um, and the, the speakers have been great. I've learned a ton. I was um, I was a little confused by having six, but I was glad in the end because I got three three more uh, talks to listen to. And um, what I will probably do, Kodrina, is um, I'll leave the studio, and if I can after my meeting, I'll try and come back for the last one. But uh, you know, you take the lead. I'm just uh, curious to see it happen. And if I can't get back into the studio, I'll just watch it on on the salsa room. I'll be here. So I've got to, based on your bio, um, Adam, I've got to assume that your your talk is going to be very funny too. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's not so funny. I think it will be more, um, I, I put a little bit of theory about the vector tiles, which might be kind of boring, but I, I, I thought it might be good to do let people know what's behind the vector tiles. No, I think, I think that'll be, That'll be great. I, I, I remember the first time I heard about vector tiles, I think, was at the Bonn Phosphor G, um, and uh, Mapbox had just released them. And it's like, wow, that's pretty cool. About five years ago already, hard to believe. Um, so we're just hanging out. Um, I'll start things up at um, 2.01 my time. Uh, or 1401 my time, uh, which is uh, 9 a.m. my time. <laughs> nine, sorry, 9 p.m. my time. 9, 9 p.m. your time. Uh, uh, Buenos huh. Aires is ahead of me. Uh, so <laughs> 3 p.m. their time. Yeah. And Adam, Adam is, you're it's now in. And, and you're you're in in Czech Republic. Are you in Prague? Yeah, uh, Central Europe, yeah, Czech Republic. Cool. So yeah, if you want to um, share your slides with your cover slide, I'll put that up so as people join the room, they'll know they're in the right place. Right now, the whole conference is seeing what we're seeing. OK. Cool, you have your own little single single view. Yeah, we are technology company. <laughs> <laughs> so you can, you can do it this way. Yeah. I want to see that one. <laughs> I'll keep this one for now. And then, so after we introduce, um, Kodrina and I will drop off and it'll just be you. <clears throat> so have you been attending sessions as well um adam uh i tried to catch up a little bit of course i i i watch uh, martin dobiash about about the point clouds just a genius <laughs> yeah like the the first time you you know any of us saw QGIS to imagine what it can do now is is kind of mind blowing. Yeah, I, I also contributed to GrassGIS, so I, I was I was very interested what what's new there, and I uh, I saw the, the talk from Václav Petrash, uh, new era of uh, GrassGIS. Mm -hmm. I'm happy that they finally changed the, the welcome screen because I, I didn't like it. So finally, finally, it's more user friendly, and I'm glad to to hear that there is there is this chance. 
I think there's going to be a talk about that. Uh, I think. Yeah, I'm I don't know if it was today or tomorrow. I think it's on it's Friday. Bit, I, I, I hate how Friday yeah. started. Yeah, but, yeah, it's, yeah it's, I think it's, I think it's on Friday, yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, one, one more minute, and then uh, we'll uh, hand it over to Adam. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Um, welcome to the SALTA room. Um, so far, uh, this session, this has been QGIS Central, uh, which has been really exciting and interesting to learn about. And our next speaker, um, Adam Laza, is going to extend the conversation to uh, QGIS and vector tiles. Uh, just sort of one quick note for those of you who are staying in this room. Um, Kodrina Ali is um, the co-moderator here, I've done the first three sessions and in the handoff at the end of Adam's talk, uh, Kodrina will be taking over the room for the, for the rest of the afternoon. Um, so I'm gonna introduce Adam. Um, and I have a hint that his, his uh, talk might be humorous based on his bio and uh, here's, here's what he says, um, which, validates him as a very interesting person already. Uh, born in the Czech uh, Republic, was always a smarty pa pants in math and geography in primary school. Started coding in high school, even though they forced him to use Pascal. It didn't scare him off. He then went off to uh, the Czech Technical University in Prague for geodesy, cartography, and geoinformatics. And during his studies, uh, worked in surveying, flew a drone, created orthophotos, and then he got into Python, PostGIS, and open source. Um, he contributed to GRASS and PyYPS, wrote plugins for QGIS uh, that never went public, and attended uh, Google Summer of Code. Um, working on his master's, he studied for one year uh, in Valencia at the Universidad Politecnica, uh, where he was cheating on Python with Java and drinking liters of horchata. Sounds like a fun year. <laughs> um, after graduation uh, with excellence, he went traveling and uh, hit the road for two years as a backpacker um, and uh, finally decided to get a real job. And uh, we're benefiting from that here. Uh, since the spring of 2020, he's been working on MapTiler as a data engineer and developer. Um, who helps maintain the Open Map Tiles project, takes care of data in the company's own maps, and is the main developer of the Map Tiler QGIS plugin, which this talk is going to be about. So um, thank you very much, Adam. Uh, you, the, the stage is yours for the next uh, 20 minutes. So we'll give you time prompts in the chat and, um, and then feed the questions that come in from the audience. And for the short term, Kodrina and I will disappear. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Michael. Uh, so my name is Adam Lazan, and as, as uh, Michael already said, I work in MapTiler, uh, where we develop uh, grid and satellite map of the entire world. And uh, we run a platform which makes it uh, easy to integrate your own data into maps. We also maintain Open Map Tiles project, which I will mention a little bit, and uh, we develop the QGIS plugin, which this talk will be about. But at the first, a uh, little bit theory about vector tiles. I will try to be quick. So vector tiles are usually in uh, pseudo Mercator projection, which is quite handy because uh, entire planet uh, fits into the square at zoom zero. And um, each, each tile uh, can be found under address uh, ZXY. 
and each tile is split into four smaller tiles at the next zoom. So, so far, this is pretty much similar to raster tiles, but uh, unlike raster tiles, uh, raster tiles uh, return PNG or WebP um, image. Vector tiles are served as a binary PBF file. And this PBF file is very small. And it keeps it keeps just data, not style. Uh, so if you open open this file in QGIS, uh, you will get um, you will get something like this on the screen. So just just raw data um, uh, split into different uh, different layers. You can see uh, there are line layers, point layers, uh, polygon layers, and uh, there is uh, something we call a vector tile schema, uh, which defines uh, what data are stored in tiles. Mm. This schema definition can be, uh, can, can be easy if you want to have just, just some points in your, in your tiles. Uh, but if you want to get a real map, uh, the schema can uh, get quite complicated. Luckily, there is an open map tiles project, uh, which is open source uh, and defines the schema for street maps. Uh, it uses uh, OpenStreetMap, Nature Earth, and Wikidata as as uh, data source, and it's um, it's actively developed. Uh, there is quite a large community. There are many PRs every month, and uh, this schema defines, um, like for example, it, it says, okay, at Zoom Four, show me just just oceans and show me just land cover. And maybe show me show me um, show me uh, count country borders and country's name. But at zoom five, uh, at uh, at line layer, at uh, but at line layers uh, with attributed the line is highway. It's uh, some important highway, and also generalized uh, geometry. So that's what's as defined in in the vector tile schema, and that's what open map tiles about. Uh, if you want to know more, there will be talk by uh, my, my colleague Tomas Pohanka, who, who knows much better. So it's uh, tomorrow at the room Buenos Aires at, uh, at uh, 10 a.m. Uh, Buenos Aires time. Uh, okay, so as I said, the tiles keep just data. Uh, so if you look at the picture, it gives you very little visual information. Uh, if you want to have some uh, nice visual appearance, you need to give your tiles some style. Uh, style is defined in, in, another, in another file, which is called style.json. It's, it's, it's just a JSON file, and it's uh, based on uh, GL style specification. Uh, Style JSON contain, contains several several um, features. There is a list of layers, which is in the style. Uh, there is also a um, list of sources, because in one, style, in one style, you can have several sources of your vector or raster tiles. And uh, it contains metadata and links to sprites and fonts. So if you have your style defined, you can you can take uh, these uh, these vector tiles and uh, give it some visual appearance. So if you look at this style with just 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 um, raw um, raw data, I don't know if any any of you can say what's what's on the tile. But if you give it a style, you can see that it's a it's a tile that uh, at zoom six that contains the whole Switzerland. And as you can see, you can have just uh, one, just one uh, data source of vector tiles, but you can use different, different style JSONs, and uh, each style JSON uh, gives your vector tiles different uh, feel and look and uh, different kind of purpose. OK, so that was the theory about vector tiles. And let's, let's go to, to QGIS. 
so QGIS started to support vector tiles in version 314. It was it was developed by Martin Dobiaš, who, who had talked about the point clouds. And uh, so he's the one who who make it make it real. Uh, in in version in the first version uh, 314, uh, it was possible only to add uh, raw vector tiles without without style. So if you want to if you wanted to uh, give your vector tiles some some style, uh, you had to either use uh, QML files or use method or plugin. In in, in next version 316. Uh, the code from the metal plugin was ported in the QGIS core classes. So now it's possible to, to style vector tiles directly from, from QGIS, uh, but you have to style each source separately. So if you have a style JSON with multiple, with multiple sources, uh, metal plugin is still the easiest way how to do it in just a few, few clicks. Okay, so about the plugin, uh, as I said, it's really easy way how to add style vector tiles into QGIS. It's it's open source, developed here in WebTiler. There is a GitHub repo with uh, with bug tracker head there, and uh, is also in the in the QGIS plugin repository. So it's really easy to install it just from the menu plugins, install and manage plugins, as, as you would do with any other plugin. Mm -hmm. the, the plugin comes with several default uh, vector maps, uh, which are hosted on Mapfire Cloud. Uh, they, are, they are tested to look good in QJS, but if you want to use them, you need to uh, API key, which I will show later. Uh, um, you can get uh, API key to Mapfire Cloud on, on the website. Uh, just sign in with your Google account, and and so uh, you can you can choose a free plan. And uh, you want to just just uh, have a look. It's 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 good enough. Um, but you are not just limited to to uh, maps hosted on Mapfire Cloud. If you have your own server or you have your style JSON. Uh, host it anywhere. You can use the Metal plugin as well, and you don't need any API key. The API key is only if you want to use uh, maps hosted on Metal Cloud. Uh, the first version of the plugin was released in uh, June 2020, just after the, the support for vector tiles was introduced into QJS. And just last week, uh, we released uh, version 2. Uh, where is some major improvements in in the visuals? Um, we uh, we took some improvements from the from the ported uh, QGIS core classes. Uh, there is added support for for icons, which were really missing. We added uh, we added uh, outdoor map uh, into into our um, into our maps, which we provide through this plugin. Uh, you can switch label of the um, of the points to to different languages, and uh, printing was improved. So if you need to print in high DPI, uh, it's much better now in the in the newer version. Uh, but what actually the the plugin plugin does? Well, as I said, uh, style JSON is defined in in uh, GL um, GL style specification. It's a JSON, and you can see it on the left side. On the left side, you can see okay, uh, create a, a layer called land use residential. It will be polygon, and uh, and the fill property of this polygon uh, will be um, uh, color property will be this color uh, defined in RGBA, and set it an opacity zero point seven, and uh, the plugin converts this into QGIS styling. So if you are used to um, QGIS symbology, you will see that on the right side, there is this color defined, and there is the opacity defined. So this is quite easy. It's, it's just static value, so, so no big deal. Uh, it, it, it can get a little bit complicated when in style JSON, uh, there is a, like a dynamic value defined. So as you can see on the, on the left side, the style JSON there is defined that uh, from from Zoom thirteen uh, use uh, use this color with uh, opacity thirty two percent, but at Zoom fourteen 
uh, uh, there should be no opacity. So on the on the left side in the star JSON, uh, this this definite from like style definition is mm -hmm. is defined on five lines. It's it's quite quite easy to read. But if you want to uh, if you want to parse it into uh, QGIS styling, you have to use some expressions, and uh, the definition of the style on the left side be the same as on the right side. But you can see that on the right side, it's it's much complicated. You have to use uh, case expression, and you have to use uh, color HSLA function, and you have to use scale linear function for interpolation. So. Uh, some expressions uh, are hard to hard, are hard to convert, but the plugin still can do it. But then you can have uh, expression like this in the style JSON, and that's when the that's the moment when plugin says no. Okay, uh, we would like to we would like to improve this in the future, uh, but there is a lot of expressions in style JSON which. Uh, which are quite hard to 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 convert, uh, but we are open to any contribution. So, if you want to help us with this, we are we are uh, we are uh, happy and we are welcome for that. Uh, but just this just a heads up. If you if you have a style JSON with very complicated expressions, uh, the QJS plugin might uh, give you a warning that okay, this is too complicated for me. You use simple expression. You should be you should be good. Okay, so let's show some demo. Um, I will create a new profile for this. Okay, so as I said, the installation is very, very easy. Go to MapTiler menu, uh, plugin menu, search for MapTiler, and uh, it will be added into your into your browser panel uh, between the other sor uh, other sources. And uh, this is the the predefined maps that the plugins offers. Uh, if you want to edit just like this, you will get an error because you didn't confirm your API key. Uh, you can go to the cloud. Okay, I'm already signed in, so I can copy this uh, this API key. But otherwise, you could just sign in with your Google account and and and, and get that API key. I copy this one. Go to QGIS, paste it. I should be good to go. Okay, so um, that's it. That's that's uh, vector tile map at at uh, zoom zero. This is the basic one. You can zoom in, and uh, this is where all the other style definitions start to appear. As I said, uh, we define uh, we offer. Um, Multiple, uh, multiple styles. I remove basic. We have street one. Um, from the others, we have we have also satellite one. It's uh, or we call it hybrid. And as I said, there's uh, in the style there could be some expression which uh, which. Um, the plugin couldn't handle, so it it it, it uh, gave me a warning. And if I open it, okay, there's an expression in the interpolation function, which is not supported. So uh, usually it just it just falls back to some to some default. Uh, in this case, into the default interpolation. So it, instead of some uh, interpolation with uh, the difficult expression, it will use just just linear uh, interpolation. Uh, in the in the newer version, we used uh, we added the outdoor map.
Uh, and as I said, uh, if you want to add uh, vector ties through is uh, um, uh, you can add one source and you have to style each source. And for example, this outdoor map consists of four four sources. So you would have to you would have to add each of these sources separately and style it separately. With this plugin, you can do it just in just in just one click. Uh, so this is an outdoor map, and on this map, I think we could show that uh, via this plugin, you can get really nice, you can get some nice uh, sports or printing materials, because uh, you can export the map into PDF and get like 300 DPI, and uh, save it. And if I open it and zoom in, because you are printing in vectors, you will get like level of sharpness, which which it's like impossible to get with with raster. Uh, if you want to, if you want to use this plugin for for printing and exporting, and you are using uh, maps from MapTier, just check our check our terms and earn condition, um, because uh, you might need a different different plan for this, as we uh, provide some uh, not not just our data. Uh, okay, um, I think that's pretty much that. I will. Look into my slides if there's anything more. Oh, so yeah, that's what I I, I uh, talked about. Uh, Metal plugin easy way how to add uh, style to vector tiles. It provides some default maps, but you can add any style JSON, and uh, really cool for printing and exporting. That's it. Great stuff. Um, always respect a man who will um, demo live on a on a presentation um, and performed performed beautifully. Um, great stuff. Thank you. And um, definitely uh, caught the audience's attention. We have uh, a number of questions out there. Um, the first first one is. Um, I think you just covered it. Are there any license restrictions for printing with QGIS map tile or plugin? Um, and if I understood correctly, you said is there? Are. Uh, if you go to to uh, plugin plugin repository, I think there is a link to our terms and conditions. So please fo follow follow these. Um, another question is: Is it possible to use custom QGIS forms with the vector tile layer? Can you repeat that? Is it possible to use custom QGIS forms with vector tile layers? I don't know, to be honest. I don't know QGIS forms. OK. Um, uh, another question. I'm not sure I understand it, but perhaps you do. Uh, can we use the vector tile source with any kind of authentication? Uh, for example, Esri vector tile with access token. Oh. I know what you mean, and I'm not sure because the, the plugin reads plugin reads style JSON and usually the authentication is done through the through the API key in the in the URL of the source. So I don't know but I guess if if you can the S3 supports like um, authentication we are directly the token in, in the URL it's possible. Otherwise I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I think we have time for um, one more question. I apologize uh, to anyone who has a question that we're not going to get to. Um, there are a lot of good questions out there. Um, again, feel free to reach out to Adam directly or the Map Tyler team um, and send any questions 
uh, that didn't get answered directly. So the, the last question was, uh, can you write map tiler vector tiles to MBT tiles or XYZ in QGIS? Um, no, not in QGIS. And if I'm not sure if, if it's it's okay if you're doing that, like it's it's like scraping scraping art tiles and saving them into your MB tiles. If I if I get that question correctly, and I would say no. But once again, I'm not sure if I, I if I get it correctly. Well, that that makes sense, and you know again. Uh, in the in the open source world, it doesn't mean everything is completely free and open. There's still um, copyrighted technology, terms and conditions of, of licenses so using the software, but using it in an appropriate way. So it's always good to check check what those terms are and yeah, reach out, reach out to our team, and we are happy to provide. Or someone who is oh, who has more knowledge than me is happy to provide and, and write answer. Great. Well, thank you again, Adam. Um, great presentation, great piece of work. And um, uh, hopefully we'll all see each other next year in Italy. Yeah, it was a pleasure, Michael. Bye. Have a good afternoon. And uh, we're going to go into our room switch over and get uh, Benoit Blanc uh, set up with uh, Codrina being uh, the new moderator for the remainder of this session.